الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد قال جل وعلا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد قال جل وعلا يا ايها الذين امنوا توبوا الى الله توبه نسوحا عسى ربكم ان يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار وقال جل وعلا قل يا عبادي الذين اسرفوا على انفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمه الله ان الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا انه هو الغفور الرحيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كل بني ادم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام التائب من الذنب كما لا ذنب له او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام respected ulama respected elders brothers sisters little ones salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh after praising the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon our beloved nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the near one the dear one this ajiz fakir miskin daif mustajir al muhtaj ila rahmati rabbihi wa barakati begins as always by first thanking you my host man lam yashkur an nas lam yashkur illah for considering me worthy of this by inviting me to convey the message of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah accepts these efforts of yours as listening to this message Allah accepts this love that you're expressing for Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for it is only the love of Allah and his Rasul that has brought you here there's nothing that I can give you my young friends you're only here because you have a love for Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is no dunya we gain and your master knows this and only your master knows the value of your effort your sacrifice and only your master can reward you for your efforts and believe me my young friends when you meet your Lord you will not be disappointed So may Allah accept these efforts of yours in listening to this message and may Allah accept these tutti frutti effort of mine. Like I said my young friend there's nothing right about me from head to toe zahir and batin. It is Allah's fazl that Allah's done sattari and conceal my faults my young friends otherwise if you were to ever come to know of it I wouldn't be here and would you ever invite me here. So may Allah accept these tutti frutti efforts of mine in trying to deliver the message of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it was revealed upon our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its true and pure form without changing diluting the message of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My young friends in this short session let us remind one another of the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you 
the love Allah has for me, the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for the whole of mankind, every single one of us, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. My young friends, it is only because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His fazal and karam that you hear. If there was no love, if there's no fadl, my young friends, you will never be here. You're not here on your own accord. Nobody has the power to do good. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. Nobody has the power to do good. Nobody has the power to refrain from evil. Everything, my young friends, is Allah's fazl. Everything is by Allah's love. My young friends, the love of Allah knows no bounds and no limits. Without doubt, He is the Arham al Rahimin, the most merciful, the most kind. How does Allah introduce Himself when He begins the Quran? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah is telling you all praises are for Allah. Why are all praises for Allah? He is the one, the only one, the Lord of what is out there. And at the same time, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most kind. His love and mercy knows no bounds and no limits. You and I can't even dream of the vastness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't even begin to you know, think about it, never mind understand it. It knows no bounds and no limits. Your wujud, existence, my wujud, existence, is only by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only by the love of Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fazal and karam. Your existence, my existence, is only by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are today wherever you are, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an imam, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a pharmacist, whatever you are, it is only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's loves, it is only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fadl and karam. Your salvation, my salvation, will only be by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Not because of your amal. What are your amal in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? If my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who was Rasulullah, does my Nabi need an introduction? His reputation exceeds him. Even those that didn't even believe in him would say what? As-Sadiqul Ameen. The truthful one. The Amanat Dar. The trustworthy. How much did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam worship Allah? How much? My young friends, there were times when he would spend the entire night in prostration. Entire night in prostration. How can one stay in prostration the whole night? You and I peck. You know, like birds peck when they're eating. We put our head down and before you know it, it's already up. Try prostrating for 5-10 minutes, see what happens to your shoulders. When it exceeds 15-20 minutes, and then watch how you will feel the pain and you'll struggle to stay in prostration. How does one stay in prostration the whole night in that position? What drives him to do that? the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would spend the entire night reciting what? one verse 
وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ This was the worship of Rasulullah. When he would stand in prayer sometimes, you and I, our practice is such that most of us, قُلْ أُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدَ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ In the first rakat, in the second rakat, in the third, in the fourth. In Fajr Salah, in Zuhr Salah, in Asr, Maghrib, Isha. On a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. From the moment you are born till the moment that you die, we don't get past that. This is our namaz. Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, come to an end. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his life, his day and night was worship. He conveyed the message, that's worship. And when he would retire and stand before his Lord, if you open the books of a hadith, my friends, you'll come across narrations, narrations like, he would read the whole of Surah Baqarah in one rakat. Surah Baqarah is around two and a half juz. And he wouldn't come to an end there. After Baqarah, he would begin Ali Imran. After Ali Imran, he would begin Surah Nisa. That's a few paras in one rakat. You know, we just read Maghrib Namaz. You know, if your Imam, let's say, began with start reciting Abba Sawatullah, for example, after Namaz, you'd kill him. Doesn't this guy know that I've got places to go and things to do? Why didn't he recite Inna Taina Kal Kawthar? Would that not suffice? This is how weak we've become. And the Prophet ﷺ is reciting how many surahs, how long these surahs, a few juz, and how was his recitation. Every letter that he recited could be heard and understood. Just imagine the Makkah Imams reciting five, six juz in one rakat. Who could stand behind them? We struggle with Taraweeh. And then the Prophet Sallallahu if he came across a verse that was talking about Jannah, he'd ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for Jannah and then continue. If he came across a verse that was talking about Jahannam, the Prophet Sallallahu would stop. He'd seek protection from Jahannam and the Prophet Sallallahu would then continue. He would ponder over the verses. This was one rakah he'd go into ruku. How long was his ruku? It wasn't just as ma'ar of Subhana Rabbi al Adim, Subhana Rabbi al Adim, Subhana Rabbi al Adim. That ruku would be as long as the qiyam. Sometimes in the hajjah. When he would come out of ruku and stand in qawma, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Allahumma rabbana wa lakal ham. That qawma would be as long as the ruku. When he would go from qawma into sajda, that sajda would be as long as the qawma. And then the sitting in between, and then back for the second sajda, would be as long, that was just one rakat, one rakat. Prophet Wasallam in general would offer eight rakats for tahajjud. How long would his tahajjud take? He would stand before the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for so long that his blessed feet would swell. And the Sahaba, when they would see him like this, they would say, Ya Rasulullah, why do you exert yourself? and stand before the Almighty Allah and worship for so long that your feet swell. And the Prophet ﷺ would say, أَفَلَا أَكُونْ أَبْدًا شُكُورًا If this is the case that Allah has purified Muhammad ﷺ, 
Shouldn't this be an incentive for Muhammad to increase his worship and be a grateful slave? So the Prophet ﷺ would exert himself. This was just salah. Then the Prophet ﷺ would fast. Mondays on Thursdays. Then on the 13th, 14th and 15th. When Ashura came, the Prophet ﷺ would fast. Then in the month of Sha'ban, majority of their times, he would either keep the whole of Sha'ban or most of Sha'ban, he would fast in preparation of Ramadan. And then what to say of the Prophet Sallallahu worship in Ramadan. This is the month in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's mercy descends in abundance. And the worship of the Prophet Sallallahu would increase in Ramadan. His du'as would become longer, his qiyam would become longer, his ruku would become longer, his sajda would become longer. And in the last 10 days, he would become Allah's guest. He would come to the masjid and not leave. Balki even inside the masjid, he would put up, a, put, up, put up a tent and he would seclude himself so that nothing comes between him and his Lord and his soul, heart and mind is focused only, only upon his Khalik and his Malik. His day was worship, his night was worship. His interaction with his wives was worship. His interaction with the believers was worship. My young friends, in spite of this, the Prophet ﷺ said, nobody, nobody will enter Jannah because of his Ahmad. So the Sahaba was shocked and said, okay, Ya Rasulullah, they couldn't understand for themselves. They couldn't understand for themselves, but they knew the Prophet ﷺ. And they knew how he exert himself and the worship that he would do. They said, Ya Rasulullah, not even you. Sayyid al awwalin wal akhirin Muhammad al Amin, Shafi'u al Mudhnibi, Rahmatul al Alameen. Not even you will enter Jannah because of your amal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ana illa an yitaghammadani Allah bi rahmatih. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not enter Jannah without the mercy of Allah till Allah doesn't cover Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his mercy. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Where does this leave you and I? Every single thing, my young friends, is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every step that you take is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every breath that you take is by the mercy of Allah and by the love of Allah. Every morsel that you consume with ease, no matter how small that morsel may be, is by the love of Allah and by the mercy of Allah. My young friends, the day Allah takes one of these blessings uh, is the day you will understand uh, this philosophy. You're sitting here before me here and now. This thought has never crossed your mind that you can ever become blind. You're looking at me and I'm looking at you. I'm delivering a reminder and you're listening to the reminder. And as I'm looking at you and you're looking at me all of a sudden, your eyes start watering, your vision becomes blur and you're realizing that your eyesight is becoming weak. You don't know what to do. What you start doing is rubbing your eyes, thinking it will go away, it'll become better. But every time you rub your eyes, it's becoming more fuzzier. And your eyesight is becoming weaker. Now you're becoming parishan. As you're sitting there, you begin to sweat. When all of a sudden you realize it's totally dark, you can't see anything. Now all of a sudden, Daqat alaykum al ardu bima rahubat. The earth, in spite of its vastness, will become tight upon you. You won't know what's hit you. You'll become, you'll begin to panic. You'll become more anxious. You'll become, you'll begin to sweat more. You'll begin to worry more. You won't know what's hit you. 
within a zillionth of a second from a totally independent person you came as a totally independent person within a zillion of a second you become a totally dependent one never mind going home I swear by his name you will not be able to leave this gathering and get that get to that door without the help and assistance of another individual now my young friend if this blessing and nikmat that you've received and took for granted was sold in the market for a billion pound and Allah bless you with that much wealth I have no doubt that you'll give that wealth to purchase yourself a pair of eyes because for you your life has now become meaningless because you can't see anything you can't do anything it is only the absence of Allah's love and Allah's mercy do people like yourself and I realize Allah's love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and we've taken it for granted so much so that everything we attribute to ourselves we believe we become something today because of some quality that we possess it's not Allah's fazl, it's not Allah's love the day my young friends Allah deprives you or me is the day you and I will realize everything is by Allah's mercy our wujud is by Allah's mercy our existence is by Allah's mercy and love our sitting here is by Allah's mercy and love you listening to this reminder and acknowledging it is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and mercy knows no bounds and no limits my young friends you are no ordinary individual from Allah's creation what does Allah say وَلَكَذْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We've honored the son of Adam. وَفَضَّلَّهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we've given this the son of Adam superiority over many of our creations. You are that creation to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given excellence. You are that creation to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given superiority. And then out of those to whom Allah gave superiority, my young friend, you are that individual. Inna Allah Azza wa Jal Ida Ahabba Abdan Aqahu Iman. Inna Allah Azza wa Jal Ida Ahabba Abdan Aqahu Iman. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual, this is when Allah gives him the gift of Iman. What is Iman? What is this gift? My young friends, you will realize on the day of judgment. Me, Allah, on that day without Iman and offer him not an earth full of gold, but offer him a universe full of gold and say, Oh Allah, let me be, take this in ransom, do not punish me. Allah says, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبٌ وَلَا وِفْتَدَى بِهِ It will not be accepted. Come on that day with nothing in terms of the dunya but you possess an iota of iman تُنْجِيهِ مِنَ النَّارِ تُنْجِيهِ مِنَ النَّارِ تُنْجِيهِ مِنَ النَّارِ The Prophet said this individual he will attain salvation because that zarra of iman will save him from the fire of hell not only are you from Allah's creation to who Allah has given superiority my young friends you are from that creation to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the gift of iman Musa alayhi salatu one said, said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wallah give me a special dhikr I'm Musa the kaleem of Allah with which I can remember you with so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Musa say la ilaha illallah 
Musa said, Oh Allah, but everyone says La ilaha illallah. I'm the Kaleem. I'm the one that converse with you. I want something specific and special for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh Musa, oh Musa, you haven't understood. If the seven heavens and the earth were placed in one part of the balance and this La ilaha illallah in the second, it would outweigh the seven heavens and the earth put together. This is the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you. My young friends, for this short session, how much love do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you? Hadith comes to mind. Hadith of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The scene is of a battlefield. The enemy is fleeing, looking for a refuge, looking for a safe haven. There's chaos on the battlefield. In the process, cousins' relations have been separated. Mothers from their children, children from their mothers. Brothers from sisters, sisters from brothers. There's a mother, she's lost her child. Everyone's looking for refuge, looking for safety. Everyone is concerned about themselves and giving priority to themselves. A mother is a mother at the end of the day. And the only concern that she has is of her child. And she's looking for her child on the battlefield. Where's my child gone? Every child that she comes across, she embraces the child. And she places the child next to her chest. And she begins to feed the child. This scene is unfolding right before the eyes of Rasulullah And the Prophet is looking at this and can see this. And the Prophet Sallallahu when he saw this, he asked the Sahaba, he said to the Sahaba, أَتَرَوْنَ هَذِهِ الْمَرْأَةَ طَارِحَةً وَلَدَهَا فِي النَّارِ Tell me, this woman, you see this woman, this woman, that is feeding this child, do you think this woman will ever, if the need arises, throw her own child in the fire this woman that has so much love for other children children that do not belong to her at a time when people are concerned about their own safety and looking for a refuge and safe place to go she has no fear or no concern for her own safety she's jeopardizing her life and she's picking up children that don't even belong to her. She's embracing them and she's feeding them on the battlefield. If a woman has that much love for children that do not belong to her, tell me my dear companions, can a woman like this, can a mother like this ever throw her own child inside the fire? The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala replied in one voice, La ya Rasulullah, this can never happen. This can never happen. Woman has so much love, where will she ever throw her own child in the fire? Prophet said, Allahu arhamu bi ibadihi min hadihi bi waladiha. Allahu arhamu bi ibadihi min hadihi bi waladiha. Allah has more love for his servants than this mother has for her child. In another hadith emphasizing exactly the same point. There was a majlis. Prophet Sallallahu is there, the Sahaba sitting with him, participating in this majlis. And a Sahabi comes. He's carrying a bird with its young in a piece of cloth. He comes to the Prophet Sallallahu and he relates, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, 
I took these young ones from their nest in the absence of the mother. When the mother wasn't there, I went to the nest and I took them. And I placed them in this piece of cloth that I had. When the mother came back from wherever it was and realized, I just left the nest and realized that I've taken them. The mother came and started flying around my head, encircling, hovering around. I opened the cloth a little, and as soon as she saw her flesh and blood, she rushed to embrace them, and she covered them, protecting them. Now this Sahabi had never seen anything like this before. And he was amazed that even animals have love, compassion, and mercy. This is why he came and he expressed this to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ understood and realized that he's surprised at what he witnessed and saw. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Are you surprised at the love? this mother has for her children I swear by the one that sent Muhammad as a Nabi I swear by the one that sent Muhammad وسلم, with the truth the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his slaves is far greater than this in another hadith it's mentioned the love 70 mothers have for their children the love 70 mothers have for their children if that was taken place one upon the balance and then the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his servant the latter will outweigh the former now the objective of this hadith is not to is not tahdeed to confine and restrict the mercy and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the objective of this hadith is to show the enormity the vastness and the magnitude of Allah's love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love knows no bounds and no limits just look at this hadith. It mentions 70 mothers. Forget 70 mothers, my young friends. Look at the love of one mother. Where will you and I ever be able to comprehend the love of a mother? We're not mothers. Without doubt, you have love in your heart. Everyone has love to some degree, compassion, mercy to some degree. You're a father, you'll have the love of a father. You're a brother, you'll have the love of a brother. You have the, you're an uncle, you, have, you will have the love of the un, love of an uncle. My young friends, you can have the love of an uncle, you can have the love of a brother. You can have the love of a father, but the love of a mother is unique. It's very different. We can't truly comprehend it. Forget any mother, just look at your mother. You know your mother, I know my mother. My young friends, tell me about your mother and her love. What doesn't or what hasn't your mother done for you? Or what doesn't she do for you? My young friends, a mother is such that when you're born, when a child is born, she's now a mother, she stops living for herself. She doesn't live for herself. When she gives birth, now she's living for that child. Her primary concern is the child. In everything, she will give preference to you. And her love knows no bounds and no limits for you. She is now dead. What she wears doesn't concern her anymore. What she eats or what she will eat doesn't concern her anymore. She has no desires for herself anymore. Her desire is your desire. Her need is your need. Her want is your want. My young friends, now you are always preference. She will wear rugs and she'll give you preference so you can wear the best, you can wear the designer names. And she will never tell you that she's struggling. 
She will eat the morsels that you've left and give you preference. If the need ever arises, she will sleep on the floor so you can sleep on the bed. When you're ill and not feeling well, what will she do? She will spend the entire night embracing you, cooling you, holding you in her arms, placing you next to her heart and chest. And in the morning, she will go out to work to provide for you. How many mothers, my young friends, how many mothers? How many mothers have not seen their child? Because she hasn't given birth to the child, the child is still in the mother's womb. You're in your mother's womb. She's never seen you. She's never touched you. She's never embraced you. She doesn't know what you look like. She doesn't know what you'll become, whether you'll become obedient tomorrow or disobedient, whether you'll have a regard for her or not. But my young friends, how many mothers, how many mothers, when they've gone to deliver you and they're in labor and in pain and it goes wrong, she encounters difficulties while she's giving birth to you and the doctor approaches her and says, okay, today I have bad news. Unfortunately, I cannot save both lives. I can only save one life. Tell me which life should I save? Your life or the life of your child? My young friends, how many mothers at that point, without thinking for a second, without deliberating, she's still young, 20 years of age, 21. What life's that? That's nothing. That's nothing. She's got years. She's got dreams. She's got aspirations. How many mothers at that point, without jijab, without thinking, at that point give preference to the unborn child and say to the doctor, Hey, don't be worried about me I've lived my life save the life of my child this is my young friends when she's never seen you held you touched you this is the love that Allah's placed in our heart if this is the love of one mother your mother add to this the love of 70 mothers and I just mentioned the objective of this hadith is not the hadith to confine and to restrict.